Hello everyone. Welcome to a new session on Pyraglobosa. And this brings to you the structure, real details and the functional details of excretory system of phyla. Uh, the excretory system of phyla, it consists of a single glandular and highly vascular kidney. It is otherwise referred as a renal organ or the organ of vaginus. Okay. Uh, it is situated on the left side of the mantle cavity that is closer to the tenedium and it is supposed that the um, one on the right side may have disappeared or got modified to form a, the gonadal genital duct. That is why only a single one is remaining and that is on the left side. Okay. Now, uh, we can see that the kidney, it is mesodermal in origin. Um, in the case of pila, it is mesodermal in origin and it is we can see that it communicates with the kidney it communicates with the exterior the external environment on one hand and with the pericardial cavity on the other the pericardial cavity as already mentioned earlier in one of the presentations that it, the pericardial cavity is a coelomic cavity okay so it uh, communicates with the coelomic pericardial cavity on one hand and on the other it communicates with the mantle cavity through the mantle cavity to the external environment so the kidney it is mesodermal in origin it communicates with the, the coelomic uh, pericardial cavity uh, and it is a true coelomoduct true coelo because it is uh, mesodermal in origin and obviously it is a duct isn't it so it is a true coelomoduct right now when we speak about the excretory function we can say that the pila is both ammonotelic and uricotelic okay uh, we can say uh, we have already seen that the pila they are amphibious in nature that is they can live in water as well as on land and they do have adaptations for the amphibious mode of life uh, we have seen the respiration and other features now coming to the excretion when a pila is in water it goes for ammonotelic excretion uh, that is it excretes nitrogenous waste in as ammonia and ammonium compounds and these ammonia and ammonium compounds they are water soluble and hence they require a, few, a huge amount of water for the removal from the body okay but when it is in water it do have the uh, what you call uh, the privilege to use water for the removal of the uh, ammonium compounds but when it is on land it cannot survive the water loss it has to minimize the water loss and for that purpose they will switch over to the uricotelic mode of excretion where the waste substances they are uh, like um, uh, converted into the ammonium ammonia compounds and ammonia comp the ammonia and the ammonium compounds they are converted into water insoluble uric acid okay and it is this uric acid which is being expelled out uric acid require uh, very uh, less water so actually uh, the water loss is highly minimized by conversion of ammonia and ammonia compounds to uric acid okay so uh, when on land it can reduce the water loss by converting uh, or shifting from ammonotelic to uricotelic okay so they are both ammonotelic and uricotelic based upon in which environmental condition or in which uh, habited they are right so as already mentioned the kidney uh, is placed in the branchial chamber of the mantle cavity closer to the tenedia now coming to the structure of uh, the kidney uh, the kidney of pila it is uh, bilocular it is two chamber it is formed of two chambers anterior renal chamber and the posterior renal chamber these two chambers together form the uh, the kidney of the pila okay the anterior chamber as you can see uh, it, it lies just in front of or anterior to the pericardium okay as uh, it is slightly uh, comparatively smaller uh, more or less oval in shape uh, and it lies to anterior to the pericardium okay now we can see the detailed structure here okay so this is the anterior renal chamber and this is the posterior renal chamber okay so we can see the structure uh, we can see it is uh, the posterior renal chamber is close to the intestinal coils. It is close to the uh, pericardium, right? Uh, uh, and all those structures which they are communicating with. Okay, we will see it in detail. The anterior renal chamber they are more or less oval in shape. Uh, as already mentioned, they uh, this is the anterior renal chamber and it is uh, uh, 
placed anterior to or in front of the pericardium uh, the anterior renal chamber it opens into the bran branchial chamber of the mantle cavity through a, a small aperture a slit like opening near the epithelia you can see over here opening into the mantle cavity okay uh, on the other hand it communicates with the posterior renal chamber this is the posterior renal chamber the anterior renal chamber it communicates with the mantle cavity through an aperture it also communicates with the posterior renal chamber through another aperture it is known as the interrenal aperture okay it connects the two renal chambers of the kidney fine then the internal cavity here you can see the uh, what you call the anterior renal chamber the uh, the dorsal and the ventral uh, walls of the um, anterior renal chamber they are provided with or they are uh, uh, what you call produced into thin triangular leaf like processes okay internally internally the anterior renal chamber has thin triangular leaf like processes on the dorsal and the ventral wall and these leaf like processes are what are known as the renal lamellae they are known as renal lamellae so renal lamellae are thin triangular leaf like processes found dorsally and ventrally along the internal lining of the uh, anterior renal chamber okay and these uh, uh, what you call lamellae they arise uh, from the those arising from the uh, roof of the uh, what you call anterior renal chamber they alternate with those on the floor so we can see that the renal lamellae they are triangular projections right and they hang into the uh, the lumen inside the uh, anterior renal chamber right so when they are hanging down into the uh, lumen of the anterior renal chamber what happens is those hanging down the lamellae those arising from the roof they alternate with those lamellae arising from the floor okay and uh, because of the presence of these lamellae the dorsal and the ventral lamellae uh, in uh, projecting into the cavity into the lumen of the anterior renal chamber what happens is the lumen inside is much reduced the lumen uh, inside the anterior renal chamber it is much reduced due to the presence of these lamellae that arise from the roof and the floor of the uh, the uh, renal uh, what you call anterior renal chamber okay i hope it is clear right now when you see uh, the dorsal and the uh, uh, ventral lamellae you can see that it is arranged on either side of renal sinuses okay uh, the renal lamellae on both dorsal as well as the ventral wall it is arranged on either side of the renal sinus okay this is the renal sinus the renal sinuses uh, on the uh, the lamellae on the roof are arranged on either side of the afferent renal sinus okay you can see efferent okay that is the, the uh, um, lamellae on the roof are arranged on either side of the efferent renal sinus and those on the floor the lamellae on the floor they are arranged on either side of the afferent renal sinus here it is the afferent renal sinus and it is on the ventral side okay that is a uh, from the floor right these two sinuses that is afferent and the efferent renal sinus they are actually uh, the branches of perintestinal sinus i hope you remember when you be when we discuss the uh, what what you call the um, blood vascular system we saw that there are uh, five different sinuses five major sinuses one of them was perintestinal sinus right so the branches of perintestinal sinus it is the afferent and the efferent renal sinuses and these renal sinuses they uh, form they run along the median longitudinal axis of the dorsal and ventral or the floor and the roof of the anterior renal chamber and from these sinuses arise the lamellae okay the uh, renal lamellae right and these perintestinal sinuses they break up into or they give out branches to supply the lamellae on both the sides so from the renal sinuses both afferent and efferent many branches arise and these branches traverse the renal lamellae okay so that is what about the uh, the afferent renal chamber so i repeat 
the afferent renal chamber it is uh, it communicates with the mantle cavity through a, an aperture similarly it also communicates with the posterior renal chamber through interrenal aperture okay uh, the uh, floor and the roof of the uh, what do you call the lumen inside the anterior renal chamber they are produced into leaf like processes which are known as renal lamellae the renal lamellae they are arranged on either side of renal sinuses on the roof it, they are arranged on either side of the efferent renal sinus while on the floor the renal lamellae are arranged on the on either side of the afferent renal sinus the renal sinuses they are branches of the periintestinal sinus and the periintestinal sinus they give out branches these branches they run through these renal lamellae i hope the anterior renal chamber is clear to you regarding the posterior renal chamber they are broad they are a hook shaped chamber uh, actually is only a single one right and situated uh, behind the anterior renal chamber this is the anterior renal chamber and it is posterior to the uh, anterior renal chamber okay and we can see that the posterior renal chamber they are a little more uh, broader and the internal cavity the large internal cavity it encloses a part of the genital duct and also a few coils of the uh, intestine okay at one end as you can see over here at one end it communicates with the uh, what you call anterior renal chamber through an interrenal aperture right similarly on the other hand it communicates with the pericardium through reno pericardial aperture okay so posterior renal chamber it communicates with anterior renal chamber as well as with the pericardium i hope it is clear okay now the uh, you can see the vessels over here these are vessels from the efferent renal vein and the afferent renal vein so the afferent and the efferent renal veins they profusely branch in the roof of the posterior renal chamber it gives off branches okay so these are the, this is about the structural features of the uh, what you call the excretory system of pila anterior renal chamber and posterior renal chamber they, that make up the single kidney present on the left side of the mantle cavity the anterior renal chamber they communicate with the mantle cavity uh, and the posterior renal chamber the posterior renal chamber on the other hand it communicates with the anterior renal chamber on anteriorly and uh, on the other side it communicates with the pericardium the anterior renal chamber do have branches of uh, uh, afferent and efferent renal sinuses while the um, posterior renal chamber do have branches of afferent and efferent renal veins both are uh, both these veins and sinuses they uh, are in connection with the periintestinal sinus coming to the physiology of excretion as already mentioned they are monotelic and uricotelic depending upon the habitat they are in Uh, from the circulating blood in the kidney the waste products are filtered out into the lumen of the kidney okay from uh, the blood flows through these um, vessels branching out from the sinuses as well as from the uh, efferent and efferent renal veins right so uh, from the circulating uh, blood in the kidney the waste products they are filtered out into the lumen of the kidney okay in the anterior chamber the surface area uh, is increased by the presence of these renal lamellae right and the excretory fluid in the anterior chamber it is uh, actually expelled out into the uh, mantle cavity through the uh, opening to the man uh, mantle cavity over here this is known as a renal pore okay so it is expelled out through the renal pore the excretory fluid in the posterior chamber it is first uh, moved into the anterior chamber through the interrenal aperture and from there through the renal pore it is uh, expelled out into the mantle cavity okay and uh, the amount of uric acid in the uh, kidney of pila it is very high during dry conditions and also during aestivation okay so this is about the excretion the uh, excretion the mechanism so we can see that the uh, blood which flows through the branches of sinuses as well as the veins it is filtered out at those positions at those sites and the uh, urine which is produced in the anterior renal chamber it is flushed out into the mantle cavity through the opening into the mantle cavity which is known as the renal pore the uh, urine which is formed in the uh, posterior renal chamber it is first moved into the uh, anterior renal chamber through interrenal aperture and from the anterior renal chamber to the mantle cavity through the renal pore okay and the 
what you call the urine, the excretory waste which is produced, it contains a high amount of uric acid during the drier conditions, that is when the pila is on the land okay, or in dry conditions and when it is in estivation. Fine. 